So I've called this Yoga DVD, Gravity and Grace. And those two words are very similar, have very similar meanings for me. And I, I define gravity as the attraction of two physical bodies. And I, I've come up with the definition of grace as the attraction of two spiritual bodies. So in architecture, gravity is very apparent. In the, in the simplest terms, the idea of creating a roof over one's head, creating shelter. So in architecture, gravity expresses itself in the design of a structure in terms of efficiency. Efficiency in effort in terms of resources, efficiency in structure in terms of the size of the structure. The, the buildings that I love the most, that inspire me the most, are the ones where that relationship to gravity is the most efficient, where the structure is very light, and there's a sense of lightness that I feel. In terms of resources, that lightness, that relationship to gravity is often expressed literally in the amount of energy that it takes to design, the energy that it takes to build, and the resources that's required to pay for it all in terms of money. And so there's a certain economy, let's say, in an efficient structure in terms of gravity that's reflected in an efficient economic building. In yoga, this idea of gravity relates to something that is written about in the Yoga Sutras, which talks about effortless effort, non-muscular effort, where there's no excessive muscular force in the practice of Hatha Yoga. And in my own experience of that, I've noticed just the shape of the musculature of my body has changed over the years. And the more efficient that I've gotten understanding my relationship to gravity, the shape of my muscles has changed. They've become longer, thinner, and yet my strength has increased. And I, I relate that both to yoga and to architecture, that that length and efficiency of effort creates an elegance and sometimes what you would experience as graceful. And the term grace, this attraction of two spiritual bodies, in the practice of, let's say, architecture, again, relating it to the experience of a building, there's an inherent spirit in a structure, in a building. Walking into an inspiring space, you feel a certain energy. And I relate that to the spirit of the building touching your own spirit. And that relationship is what draws one to re-experience over and over again uh, a beautiful space. The profession of architecture is a very useful practice in society that gives people an experience that they feel. With yoga, it's a similar, let's say, spirit connection, spirit relationship, where in the practice of yoga, there's a connection with your, let's say, personal spirit, and then the universal spirit. And oftentimes, in the practice of yoga, I get beyond myself. My experience transcends the personal and I have this sense of a much bigger experience, this universal experience. And so with the practice of yoga, there's this connection, this relationship to the spiritual realm of the universal with the personal. This similar process happens, I found in yoga that you come to a yoga mat and you're dealing with certain criteria, let's say, expectation, expectation of the practice, um, existing conditions that you're bringing to your practice, illness, injury, like I talked before. And in the process of getting on your mat and starting to experience these, let's say, obstacles in, in that healing process, something shifts just in the process of making relationship with that so-called obstacle and being present with it without trying to force it into something that it's not, but just staying close, touching it softly, uh, transmutation takes place. 
some alchemical reaction takes place. And it's in that spark where I see often grace, grace both in yoga and I also call grace in architecture. Um, many times in the design process, an idea will come from who knows where. And sometimes in the middle of the night, in dreams, sometimes it wakes me and I have to get up and actually draw it down. Um, same in yoga, that sometimes the solution to the resistance in my body comes without me really efforting. Where, let's say, um, there are many poses that are therapeutic for specific issues, specific illnesses in the body. And yet, my experience is that just a general practice with consistency over time, the subtle changes occur without me even really noticing until one day the shift has happened and I'm aware, wow, something changed. And it wasn't really through conscious effort in terms of specifics that that change manifested. So in, the, in that respect, these two practices are very similar. The gift of obstacles is also an area where I see this common thread between architecture and yoga. When I first came to yoga, it was because of injuries, being an athlete as a youth, and really suffering from many injuries incurred on a sports field or on a court. And initially, I just wanted to fix them. I just wanted to be free of this injury, free of this illness. And yet, because yoga is a nonlinear process, it wasn't that easy. There were certain areas where there was immediate relief from the physical symptom of the obstacle. And yet, other situations didn't easily respond to the practice of yoga. And it forced me to develop a new type of relationship to this obstacle, where my attachment, let's say, to the outcome of my practice, I had to relax. And it was in that place that forced me out of this comfort zone that created a new opportunity for my awareness to, let's say, see things differently than the way I'd seen them before. And in the practice of yoga, this has proved to be very useful, useful in teaching yoga and also useful as I have worked through some of these more difficult obstacles, these more difficult situations that have presented themselves both physically and emotionally. In architecture, there's a similar process of where this obstacle, let's say the constraint of a budget, where you have a fixed amount of dollars to build something and yet the program has bigger expectations and these two things don't quite match. And that situation is very common in the practice of architecture. And over the years, my experience is instead of dreading that situation, of seeing it as an opportunity and that that apparent dichotomy between not having enough money to do what seems to be needed for this particular program creates a new way of looking at something, a new way of looking at function, a new way of looking at form, a new way of looking at material and structure. And some of the most attractive projects that I've worked on over the years is where I've really dialed in to that relationship where the obvious solution was not immediately apparent and a new solution presented itself just by being quiet and staying in the process and waiting, waiting for the inspiration to provide a solution. And I've seen this time and time again. And so now I've begun to trust this process, both in architecture and in yoga, where as I become aware of resistance or obstacle, I am not trying to fix it. The, the intention is to just meet that resistance and touch it softly, stay in relationship to it, and wait. And in this process of waiting, something transmutes, something manifests that was not immediately apparent prior to initiating this process. It only became apparent once I entered the process. And this is very inspiring for me as an architect and as a yoga practitioner.